Good morning, everybody. Yeah, we got a surprise for you. We're going live, baby. I was meant to make a private Patreon episode. We'll still do that for you. But first, we've got some court records to read. A judicial notice of epic proportion. Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of this here Bachelor Nation News. Coming to you with some, you know, I just, uh, I do feel like these conversations can do better as sort of a, you know, live stream format. Y'all have proven through Super Chats and your support that live stream is what you want, right? You know, this could be a video I was going to make, but um, I'm here for you. Good morning, Kaylor. Good morning, everyone, everyone, everyone else. Let me know where you're checking in from. I see Julie's here with a sunny afternoon in Columbus, Ohio. Is it already uh, afternoon there? I'm still in the morning here. I'm in central time. Is Columbus not in central time? I guess it's not, is it? It's east of Cincinnati. Okay, who cares? We're moving it on. Kim Duncan's probably checking in from the desert, I assume. Um, Reg Angel said this unemployed thing might work out for me for catching lives. All right, we're going to just dive right into it head first. It's the deep end, folks. I would never suggest diving in head first in the shallow end. Steph in Jersey Shore. Tina checking in this morning from Santa Diego. It's raining in Iowa. Good morning. We got multiple people from Iowa. Bit, who knew we were so big in Iowa? So I'm going to share with you guys what we have here. Um, <clears throat> it's 84 pages. We're going to flip through some of it. The Maricopa County Superior Court, State of Arizona. This was filed yesterday by what appears to be uh, Jane Dodo Bird the Third's lawyer. Um, this top comment I'm going to share with you says it all right here. Oh, hold on a second. Is this the comment? Not a lawyer, but I feel like this makes her look worse. Oh boy, we're already receiving super chats. Brianne with $5. Coffee on me. Thank you, Brianne. I appreciate it. Um, Tasha and I will be heading to our doctor's appointment. Um, and la -da 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 -da. Dallas in the house. I'm excited. I just got a text from a new baseball team here in Nashville. So your boy's going to be chucking it. Let's go. I got to bring my son and his little bassinet to my baseball games. Do they make um, Do they make uh, little like like steel umbrellas for the stroller so that the balls don't hit them? All right. Greensboro, North Carolina checking in. Kenzie in Minnesota. Is it spring yet in Minnesota? Kimberly says she has to be stopped. Well, that's what the court is intending to do is seek justice. They'll either stop her or they'll stop Clayton from filing such a frivolous lawsuit where he doesn't want to be slammed. Um, and speaking of slamming, no, they didn't even slam in the first place. Well, some of the paper, some of the documents I'm going to read for you guys right now, and I'm going to try my best to shuffle back and forth. Uh, some of these documents will show uh, text messages from uh, Greg Gillespie and uh, Janie Dodo Bird. To support her position either at trial or in future dispositive motions pursuant to Arizona Rule Evidence 201, Petitioner Janie Dodobar III respectfully asked the court to take notice of certain records reflected in the table below. Because Ms. Jane Doe has supplied the court with the necessary information to support this request, judicial notice is mandatory, not optional. The court must take judicial notice of a party requested and the court is supplied with the necessary information. Not a lawyer, and I'm loving it if there's any lawyers in the comment section you want to comment on this, but it's my belief that the reason why Jane Doe's lawyer posted this judicial notice is so that Clayton's side can't claim that she's a repeat offender. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the idea. Like, look, we've already shown that she wasn't guilty of X, Y, and Z, so therefore you can't hold it against her. That's my thought. Now, when you read the text messages... It doesn't take a rocket scientist, although I don't know why a rocket scientist would be, um, you know, dabbling in this nonsense. But it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that traps are being laid. Um, and uh, I guess one of the accusations made against Greg Gillespie in this case back from, I think, 2021 was that one of the claims was that she claimed he coerced her into an abortion because she said, if we decide to date, I'll, I'll get an abortion, right? And then he says, all right, fine, sure, let's do it, let's do it. And then he thinks she took the pills and he like blocks, blocks, blocks. Uh, again, I, I'm summarizing 80 pages of content, so it might not be so simple. And then she goes, ah, but I didn't even take the pills. 
And he's like, all right. And then they have to start this negotiation over and over. Hello, Aaron. Aloha. From Hawaii to Nashville, Tennessee. Aloha. Stephanie said, glad you're doing live streams more. Well, I got blazing fast internet. I got a professional new camera. I tell you what, I don't even want to tell you what I spent on this lens. This lens is so good. Look how good it is. I got my old koozie. It even makes my old koozie look good. This koozie is so old. It's busting at the seams, but look, this koozie, if you guys know me, it includes a fuel gauge. So this fuel gauge lets you know how much coffee is left in your container. God forbid. I mean, this would, this would help out if we lived on some sort of weightless, you know, world where you couldn't actually feel the gravitational pull. But I don't know if you guys know this right now. I am at full, baby. Oh, and Prez with a huge kind of maxed out super chat of the day. That's too kind to end Prez. $50 says to put towards your airfare or breadsticks for Clayton's court date. Uh, how about both? How about we'll do that for both? Thank you so much for that. And yes, please hit the like button. Stephanie checking in from Cincinnati. Amy, as a former practicing lawyer, now working on my karma points as a teacher, you definitely think critically as a lawyer should. Yes, it is a smart move to include that in the pleadings. Well, it might be a smart move to include it for certain reasons, but you have to wonder if she's going to look pretty bad considering, you know, some of these text messages in some part might make Clayton look like, you know, I mean, look, I'll just read them for you. How about that? Uh, I'm not afraid to share my opinion, even though I'm being threatened with lawsuits. By the way, yesterday was Megan Fox's birthday. Tonight, she has a live stream. I'm going to be joining her, along with prob probably other people, on her live stream tonight. She made a fantastic video, which you guys are going to have to go check out. Let's just find it right here. Meg Fox, uh, this video she made yesterday, a lot of people say, oh, how do I, how do I, uh, you know, how do I share this content with others? Like it's so, it's so much, you know, well, the video she made yesterday shows the too long, didn't read version of this whole entire court case. So there it is from 18 hours ago, Jane Doe v. Clayton Eckerd, too long, didn't read recap. So you're going to need to go check that out. Even if you know all the details, because it's going to elevate this story to a much bigger audience, which is kind of the biggest protection we need right now. Oh, do, am I protected by the truth? Yes. Yes, I am. But I'm even more protected if bigger journalists and bigger media companies cover this, right? I don't. I still don't want to have to spend $200,000 defending myself, hiring great lawyers and all the work that's going to go into it. But I will. I will. I don't want to. I'd rather us spend our resources elsewhere. Um, Mindy said, are you guys still taking baby name suggestions? We are still taking suggestions. The baby's not going to be named until we look him in the eyes. We're going to wait for him to tell us his name. Um, all right, so let's keep it going. Peaky also checking in from Hawaii. Aloha to you as well. All right, so they say to support their evidence, they're sharing all this information. Judicial notice of these documents is proper because the records all relate to another matter filed in the Maricopa County Superior Court. It is well settled. A court may properly take judicial notice of its own records. So then basically, and by the way, this is why Clayton's case is so important because they'll probably use this for judicial notice for future cases if 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 she sort of wins this, right? Uh, $10 super chat from Aaron Laviola. What a beautiful name, Laviola, Aaron Laviola. To help you stay caffeinated as this wild ride continues. Support journalists. Thank you, Aaron. You have replenished me to uh, full. I'm at full right now. Appreciate you so much. Also, hey, yeah, why, you know... You know, we, we've been accused of not following Jane Doe's side, yet here we are with an 84-page uh, court reading. To avoid any misunderstanding about what this request means and what the court is being asked to do, Miss Jane Doe merely asked the court to take notice of a prior proceeding in which she was a party. In doing so, the court may take notice of the existence of the allegations in that case and how those allegations were resolved. At the same time, the court is not being asked to find that any of those allegations were true or false because doing so would be improper. <laughs> yeah, so they're saying, don't try to adjudicate previous cases. That's already been done. While matters of public record, say, okay, it goes on and on. To summarize, and again, this is from her perspective. And by the way, she must be spending a fortune on her lawyer. Unless he's doing this for free. We can't imagine that's the case. Uh, but she must be spending a fortune on this. On August 21st, 2021, Miss Jane Doe filed a civil action in Maricopa County Superior Court against Greg Gillespie. In her complaint, Miss Jane Doe alleged she and Mr. Gillespie dated briefly 
She became pregnant with Mr. Gillespie's child, and after learning of the pregnancy, Mr. Gillespie subsequently used verbal and emotional abuse to coerce Miss Jane Doe into terminating the pregnancy, which she later did. We're going to read those text messages and decide. Amy with a $10 super chat. Uh, I believe that's from the, uh, uh, is that from Arab, the Arab Emirates? Is that $10, 10 Arab Emirates dinars? What's the currency there? But either way, thank you so much. Um, very nice stuff. So Mr. Gillespie denied Miss Jane Doe's claims and he further alleged Miss Jane Doe lied about being pregnant. Based on that allegation, Mr. Gillespie asserted counterclaims for fraud and intentional infliction of emotional distress. So the intentional infliction of emotional distress, basically both sides were suing each other for emotional damage and neither side won. Carrie with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Carrie. You guys are absolutely fantastic. On July 26, 2023, both parties filed simultaneous motions for summary judgment. On November 9th, the court issued a minute order entry granting both motions for summary judgment, thereby terminating the action. The court made no findings as to whether Miss Jane Doe was telling the truth or lying about her pregnancy. The court did not find Miss Jane Doe lied about being pregnant. Mr. Gillespie later applied for an award of taxable costs claiming he was the prevailing party. On February 15th, 2024, the day after her twins were set to be born, the court issued a minute entry order denying Mr. Gillespie's request for costs. In that order, the court made a finding that neither party prevailed under the unique, cir unique circumstances of the case. So it's my view, looking back on this, that... Greg Gillespie never had a necessary smoking gun to prove she wasn't pregnant. Stephanie Larson, thanks for the super chat. So, oh, Angel, thank you so much. $20 super chat as well. Had to join in on the fun. Thank you, Angel. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Good to see you out there. Uh, we love Angel. She's our angel. She's our guardian angel. Uh, we love a good angel. Um, yeah, we're going to need some angels with this case, folks. Um, so my thought was the same argument will be made here, which is that can it be can a negative be proven it's so hard to prove a negative they would have to have jane doe probably admitting to fabricating a pregnancy they can prove there's no evidence that she ever was pregnant past hcg tests but can they prove through you know she never took an ultrasound so she she never did that she did take blood tests that showed little to no fetal dna but will she get off much like Clayton did twice on the idea. I'm just swallowing these jokes. Can't you? Uh, big gulp. Uh, <laughs> I mean, have you seen his hands? Come on, folks. Can she get off on the idea that um, there is this shred of, you know, little to no, not no DNA? Um, that's the question. I don't know if, I think the judge in this case has a lot more evidence against her than in the Greg Gillespie case, because in this case, you've got her statements that just counter, counter, um, you know, they, 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 they counteract each other. She said she had a miscarriage in December, November, September, July. She showed bellies in October. She's jumping horses in the, you know, um, <clears throat> A scorpion said, uh, Runky of the Bailey made a nearly one hour video of this case. I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to check it out. Um, <laughs> so then they share the timeline again, goes down and down. Uh, what we're interested in is the text messages. And by the way, I've shared with you what I've gleaned from Gillespie's side, which was he was going through a breakup. It, he had what started as like a one night stand, took someone home, her. And then we also saw all of their limited messages, uh, excuse me, all of their um, a limited friend circle Instagram posts where she would post things like, oh, being a single mother's tough, having these babies, whether you like it or not. Oh, deadbeat dads are this. And um, he believes that those, me those Instagram stories were sent to intimidate him and really try to destroy him. Stephanie, thank you for the super chat. Short shorts or skinny jeans for Megan's life. Well, I'm doing skinny jeans tonight. I got the skinny jeans tonight. I got the kind of, I'm as skinny. I put them, I put these jeans, uh, I put these jeans a little uh, extra hot in the dryer just to just to tighten things up for you guys. I didn't want to be all loosey-goosey with you. Um, Rebecca said her new story will be that she really was pregnant, miscarried in July, but then got too scared, and that's why she faked all the other stuff. Well, regardless of, I, y y by the way, not bad. Not, not a bad theory. Regardless of why she faked certain things, like she admitted to faking... Uh, I guess fraudulently doctoring ultrasounds, ultrasound images that 
have yet to be proven to be actually hers. And she says she did it because she was scared Clayton was going to find her. So yeah, she might admit to things with some sort of contingency. Like I admitted to it, but then I was scared or, you know, I knew, it, you know, whatever, but either way, it doesn't change her excuse for doing that. Doesn't change the fact that she would have then admitted to doing it. So, um, we got some of the logistics here. The defendant knows the sum, you know, how much money is owed by each other. Um, uh, intentional tort, and you know they tried to talk about in, in emotional distress. Again, I don't want to. I want to go more th so through the text messages because some of this feels redundant. So here she has a document to whom it may concern. July sixteenth, twenty twenty one. Patient was evaluated at the office today and was determined to be in early stages of pregnancy. Patient was on seizure medication that decreased the effectiveness of her oral contraceptives. Please contact her office uh, for any further questions. I don't know anything about this. I don't know what the test levels are. And as we've seen with other fudging going on, I just have to say, I can't, I can't take this. I'm not in a position to take this as verified that she was pregnant. By all means, this is better than not being verified. Like this definitely works in her favor. But what was the test that she took? We've said this all along. Whatever, whatever gave her the ability to test positive for HCG um, you know, levels at 102 in October, when she now says she clearly wasn't pregnant, whatever that was that gave her the chance to test positive then, maybe she knew about it. I uh, So we have a urine pregnancy test, uh, positive, uh, me and Aria, I don't know what that means. I don't know if this is HCG. I have no idea. Uh, my guess is a urine pregnancy test is HCG, but I don't know. So that's her evidence that she was pregnant. So it looks like for the most part, Gray's will be Greg and she will be blue. So what they're going to try to provide in these text messages is excuses why Greg either admitted to knowing they were pregnant or, you know, whatever is, you know, some of that emotional abuse they're talking about. We need to get our lives back and healthy and then we can get to know our true selves. This is damaging both of us uh, severely with every hour that continues to pass. I know that I liked you very much when this wasn't on our minds. And by the way, anything he says here, in my opinion, is him trying to get her to take the abortion pills because he may think she's pregnant. He doesn't want to have the baby, as we're going to see. And it kind of feels like he's trying to negotiate with a, with, um, with a hostage type of deal, right? Um, uh, Beak O Cat said amenorrhea is lack of period. Miss periods, if not mistaken. Thank you so much. By the way, how would the medical providers know if she missed a period? Would, would that be just, they, they told, would she have to just report that herself? We need to get our lives back and healthy and then we can get, so do, um, I want this to be over with. Do you, can we take care of it this week and try for this weekend? Take care of it means have the abortion. The timing is perfect. I'm sorry, uh, the abortion pill, I believe. The timing is perfect. I don't want to go into the week next week with this on our minds any longer. I should be almost healthy. This will be beyond us. Hopefully have a nice weekend going into the week and we can get back to being ourselves. I promise this to you. I will support you after this. I will grow with you, get to know our real selves and we can begin our relationship in the in the tight foot, in the right foot. Oh, pun intended. Uh, the tight foot. I need the, <laughs> I need the tight foot. Sounds like the name of a young uh, Native American. Uh, I need the same from you to see that you support what I'm trying to do here. Also, get back to healthy. So I guess they're claiming these are um, empty promises because he's probably, my guess is, um, Carrie said self-report. So it's self-reported. All right, so let's just go back real quick. So what you're telling me is, the procedure was a urine pregnancy test. Indication was that she self-reported that she missed her period. So really, this doesn't tell us anything we didn't know before. Um, oh, sorry, I started whistling. Uh, let's keep going here. So the text messages are faded, uh, much like our uh, patients. Um so she mentioned something about Sedona on Sunday night. He says, yes. She says, yes to what? He says, can't talk right now. I said, yes to your last message. Are you coming over later? I would rather take the pills tonight so that you can take 24 hours later and be better before we go to Sedona. So he's saying, we'll go to Sedona, but you got to take the pills first. He said, we shouldn't prolong that. You can come over to my house. I'm feeling good. No coughing today. So maybe, maybe he did believe she was pregnant, but I think what the judge ruled is that you can't coerce someone 
like it's not coercing someone to take abortion pills. You're unless you're opening their mouth and placing the pills and blah, 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 it's not coercing. But that's what she's accusing him of. He's you could say he's manipulating the situation. Maybe after he thinks she takes the pills, he blocks her or whatever. But either way, what can you do? Is that is that you know you could say oh so and so shitty for doing that, but that's what we're working with here a shitty situation. She says, yes, I'm coming over. I don't want to be sick in the morning for the trial. I would definitely be fine by Sunday if I did that. Again, what trial is this? I have no idea. Is this their trial? Is this the contractor trial? Natalie, with a $5 super chat, testing positive after a claim that she miscarried in July showed she can test positive outside of being pregnant. That seems bad for her case. Bing, 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 bing. You got it. Absolutely. Hold on. I wasn't ready. She lied. All right, so we move it along. Um, he said, will you take the pills tonight? I don't want to have a baby this way. That would mean you can take the others tomorrow and Friday, and by the weekend, I will be hopefully 100%. This, is, this will be past us, and we can plan to go to Sedona maybe Sunday. I have PTO also. If you can get off work, we could go Sunday to Monday. I need to relax after all this. I know you do also, and I can't with everything going on. This should, be, this should have been completed this time last week. So I guess this is a week after she claimed to take the pills. Now, what we know, what, what the assumption is, is that she wasn't pregnant, right? I think it's fair to make that assumption. You guys can have your opinions. I have mine. But assuming she knew she tested positive, knows she's not pregnant, knows she's not going to take the pill, she's going to do whatever she can to lact, excuse me, milk this situation as long as possible to try to get him to actually date her uh, neither of us had handled it well i'm sorry i got upset i'm sorry i blacked blocked you i'm sorry i am sick and can't be myself at the moment uh, he said i i'm sorry i blacked you but i think he meant blocked uh by the way greg gillespie's a large man with probably big thumbs so i'm assuming he's got, he got a lot of typos going on here um <clears throat> again this is with greg gillespie not clayton eckard so audiences and lawyers defense you know clayton's defense is going to want to use this information against her whether they're still allowed to i have no idea christina said i did research on the exact medication she takes for epilepsy and it causes false pregnancy tests this is a very well-known fact she will test positive every time pregnant or not christina if you could uh, dm me or email me any of your research that'd be fantastic uh, audrey said whose metaphorical tits are we milking well the uh, maricopa county court system's metaphorical tits are are full of uh la lactaceous goods uh, uh, thanks to uh this uh, litigant here um big thumbed big boy he said, I promise you we could continue to see one another, assuming you want to. Grow with each other. Use this as a reason to be stronger and build a foundation. We moved way too fast. I said this then and I say it now. We need to get to know one another and not on this stressor. Neither one of us had been ourselves. Well, they should have had a Snickers bar. And there's no chance we will be until this is beyond us. I want to get to know you, not this version that no normal couple would ever have to face. We haven't handled it well until now, and we won't until this is behind us. We're human. We have feelings, and this stressed us to the max. I want to do everything I can to move past. He'll get to know one another under normal circumstances. We wanted to take care of this weeks ago. Text message from Mr. Gillespie expressing his de desire to have a relationship after Miss Jane Doe would have an abortion from the week of August 4th, 2021. And I, my argument argument is that Mr. Gillespie saying he wants to have a relationship doesn't mean he does. And again, like I said, you can call him an asshole all you want, but she says, I had, I had my, made my decision and have been totally prepared to do exactly what we discussed today. That being take the pill. It's weird. She refused. She like, in some instances, she's not like saying it herself. He says, I will not relive one moment of this. Is that clear? I will not discuss this one more minute. If you bring it up and show hesitation, I'm calling the cops or not your choice. Um, uh, I'm not hesitating, she says. And he says, you've been dragging for 20 days, wasting our time. She said, you call me the B word and a liar. She lied. And I'm still saying, I'll keep my promise. She says, aren't we go, aren't we doing an abortion? He says, or are you that greedy women? You are. I'm so confused. She says, he says, I'm not a effing day in the, I have not a effing say in the matter. If I don't get a say, then you don't get money from me. I'm confused. You are holding me hostage over a flipping child. She says, you do get a say. He said, it's pathetic. Yeah. I said, end the life of an unwanted, not created out of love child who doesn't have a heartbeat. She says, which you can still have. And he says, and let us live. Are you effing, uh, are, uh, live our effing loves, which right now you are ruining. Oh, let us live our lives, which you are ruining. You know how it is when you text message and you're upset. Um, 
Thank you for all of the folks in the comment section. We have plenty of people watching 1100. I appreciate all of you. As soon as we're done here at 12 Central Standard Time in exactly 30 minutes, whether we finish this live stream or not, I will be moving over to Patreon for all of our private membership only content. So if you want to join us on Patreon, you go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Uh, again, that's patreon.com slash Dave Neal. That's where we'll be in uh, about half an hour. But uh, that's it. If you enjoy what we do. We do a Patreon every day, usually about one to two hours. Um, uh, uh, that really doesn't seem right to do. He said, pretty effing clear. Neither it is. Take the effing pills and stop threatening me and lying. She said, I think you're the one threatening here, not me. He says, great. You could block me. Your choice not to. She said, I thought you wanted an abortion. I don't get it. He said, haven't th threatened you with one thing. Um, uh, and then we already read that text message. Yet, so let's keep going. Um, he says, yeah, I'm serious. I don't give a flip. She said, I would keep my promise to you. He said, church is a belief, one belief. You already lied to me on many fronts. I will never believe you. She says, then why do you care about a bastard child? I have changed my mind because I have felt tortured on this. So she does that thing she did with Clayton where she says, I have changed my mind. He says, until you effing prove it with actions, you are all talk, immature child. She said, I would take them for you. Wow, I was going to do that. I am ready to do that. He said, no, 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 you would. Um, she said, I don't deserve this. Try being a woman, having an unplanned pregnancy at 31 and you feel the guilt. Uh, by the way, she's saying, I mean, you know, same script. He said, have fun living the single parent life. She said, no, I do like you and want you. I want to have the abortion and keep my promise. He said, no, you don't. She said, this could be so easy. Yes, I do. He said, then prove it and stop putting me through this. She said, I had made my decision and have been totally prepared to do exactly what we discussed today. So she says... She's prepared to do what she discussed today, but she doesn't actually say sort of all of the facts, which is kind of confusing. Boots on the ground said her text drive me insane. I could imagine being Matt, Mike, Greg, or Clayton. Amy said, I always missed a Patreon being in the a UAE, but I am not going to miss this one. Oh, well, thank you, Amy, for joining us today. I'm sorry you missed the other one. I wish we could do them 24 hours a day, really. Shannon said, the manipulation is triggering. So I don't know why, but these are in Word documents. Um, back to the matter at hand. Are you going to take care of this? I've already agreed to what you've asked for. I need the same in return. She said, if I am giving up the kid for no reason in my mind, other than that I am being selfish, I have high expectations for us as a couple to make this right someday. You have to remember, they had a one night stand. Maybe they, maybe they hooked up a few times after that, but that's how it started. Don't think I'm crazy for that. I'm sorry. I don't enter into a relationship lightly. I actually do like you and care about you. Yes, I've been level 100 needy and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, level one. Hold on. Can we, can somebody make us some AI for a level 100 needy level 100 needy? All right. If you want to join the Patreon and be level 100 needy, what is that like a course you're taking? Well, I've signed up for the Jane Doe school of trapping and, um, I'm on, well, what course are you in level 100 needy? Uh, following that it's level 200 desperate. And then level 400 is our master program. Level 400, um, uh, doctoring ultrasound images. Oh boy. We're eating up folks. Level 100 needy. Um, she said, once I make my mind up, I promise this is big boy, Dave Neal. We're coming to you live with level 100 <laughs> breaker breaker. This is level 100 needy coming in for, a, uh, for an HCG exam. Um, Claude says she's self-aware. Uh, sure thing. Uh, -da 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 -da. she's so needy. She wants to, uh, okay, let's just keep going that. Yeah. She says, once I make my mind up, I promise you, I will not look back. So please don't get upset with me for questions. He said, then make up your mind and don't look back. I have being an adult, stop in the circles and stop making our hearts beat out of our chest. Um, uh, -da 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 -da. she says, I'm just saying you're acting obsessed with me, taking the pills and not with me as a person. Yeah, Jane, he's obsessed with you taking the pills because he doesn't want you to be the mother of his firstborn son. Son, Bruce says, I think I have tenure. tenure. <laughs> Big boy, Dave level 100 needy. Um, yeah, that's, it's just like an old timey, uh, breaker, breaker, level 100 needy coming out. Copy over, over level 100 needy. Damn right. I'll be wearing a level 100 needy shirt as I report for a trial. Uh, da, 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 da. He says, and I asked you to come over. You didn't have to be alone when doing it because you asked that. So what's changed? Oh, so she said she wanted to be alone. Um, 
she, she said, I'm not being manipulative. You are out. No abortion. You are in abortion. I'm asking for guidance. He said, though I want to get to know you, doesn't not mean that I already do. She said, I don't want to fight with you. He said, I have said the same thing all along. We will date and be together. I have not changed my mind. And then she said, you blocked me the second you found out I took the pills. <laughs> so he's clearly trying to tell her what he needs to say to her to get her to take the pills. You tell me if that's legal or illegal. If she were actually pregnant and he actually knocked her up, then this would be a dick move. It'd be a dick move to convince somebody to take abortion pills and then block them. But it's not illegal. It's up to her to decide whether she wants to keep this, right? Level 100 needy merch. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely be getting level 100 needy merch. Absolutely. He said, I have not. So she goes, I was updating you on what was going on, checking on how you were doing. You had no interest in me. So he he thinks she took the pills and he blocks her. Uh, she says, uh, we already shared that one um, about making her decision. Let's keep going here. Um, uh she said, I'm happy to take him any time. He says, it clear, it shows clear that you don't want to, so keep the effing child. Okay, so some of these are repeats. Um, uh, she said, I still want exactly what you wrote this morning. He says, I don't believe you do. She said, nothing has changed. We have both been crazy. He says, if you did, you would just take care of your part so we can move forward. Um, he said, stop putting me through this. She said, I had made my decision and been totally prepared to do exactly what we discussed. He said, I'm not, I will not relive one moment of this. All right. So some of that seemed to be repeats. She said, I, I have offered to take the pills. And he said, and maybe he said what I need and you c c calm to want to help. And yet here we are. I said, what would help? Nothing else would help right now. That's the only thing on my mind. That's the only thing that led us here. She said, I will do that because I care about you and I have been crazy too. Um, all right. So we get that crazy part. Um, I don't want to fight about you. Uh, who, so the, we go back and forth, things we've already seen. Um, uh, so on the right, she says, please unblock me on social media if you mean it. You know that is a major sore spot for me and why it is. So I would like to know what they mean by that's a sore spot. Um, he, she said, the drugs do not interact well for people with epilepsy. So I may decide to do a surgical in a week or two like you uh, wanted originally. I hadn't told the doctor with my choice that I had epilepsy and was on medicine. So now she's saying she might prolong the uh, pill abortion and just do a surgical abortion. That, in my belief, is her delaying the abortion so that way she can continue the ruse. That's my opinion. Um, Boots calls it abortion extortion. Extortion abortion. Uh, level 100 needy abortion extortion. Um, Okay, so it goes on. She said, I might do that. Um, I don't hate you at all. I wouldn't take the pills if I did. I still want you if you want me. I want you if you want me. I want you to abort me. I need you to take the pills. I want... Okay. Um, he said, did you take them? She said, I'm feeding the horses, but I am going to go and take them. Uh, the first, absolutely keeping my promise. Are you keeping yours from earlier or did you mean what you said tonight? So... He said, uh, so many false narratives. It's very peculiar. She said, you blocked me everywhere. You had no intention of ever speaking to me or seeing me. As I have said over and over, I don't get why you would choose to block me everywhere after you knew I took the pills and not before. You had no concern for how I was feeling or anything. So what he could have done is just blocked her in the first place and, and called out her and, and, you know, and called her out on this. But he, I'm sure, I'm sure to some degree he believed she was pregnant. The reason why Clayton didn't believe she's pregnant is because he found out about Greg. And once Clayton found out that this had happened before, you start to, you start to go, oh, maybe she's lying about all this. Um, so, she then says, I think if you're going to be gone either way, I should proceed with it. I've tried every way to figure out how to trust that you would be there, and I can't, even though I wish more than anything that I could. He says, hey, I'm not ignoring you. I've been working all day. Um, I have a team dinner tonight, and I'm going to. Doctor says I'm not contagious now, and I have not had a fever, but I'm very fatigued, just working at home all day. Uh, she said, well, if you're not contagious, we can see each other. That's great. We can do that before I say for sure that I'm keeping it, but right now I am. I really would like an answer to the trust question. He said, keeping what? The baby? You are? Oh, no! 
She says, so you go back and forth and change your mind more than anyone I know. Oh, in your word. She lied. I haven't changed mine once. Um. Wow. So at that moment, he's like actually surprised. Boy, pray for her Microsoft Word or wherever she has these all saved in. Um, he says, you're making this much more difficult than it needs to be. I don't want to hear that. I just want you to take care of it and move past this. Uh, she said, I'm not doing it without spending time together after this past weekend, which he said, which you have yet to take control of and do instead of all this nonsense heckling for what? He, she said, that would be stupid of me. It shouldn't be that hard for you to see me if you really want to be with me. Um, he said, I'm stressed to the max. And she said, the last thing in the world I want is for you to lose your job. I think you're incredible and an amazing salesman from what I know. I wouldn't want to be with you if I didn't think you were as committed to being successful and aspirational as me. Level 100 needy, aspiration. Uh, she's aspirational, all right. All right. Don said he is literally negotiating with an emotional terrorist. The funniest part to me, and I hate to say funny because this is a real human who had to go through it, but the funniest part to me with Greg is that he blocked her after he thought she took it. Like he, And then she called his bluff and she's like, no, I didn't actually take it. Why didn't she take it? Because it's my opinion that there was nothing to take. Uh, and that's why she's going to go from taking the pill to surgical. I mean, at some point she's going to go all the way up to adoption. I will give the baby up for adoption if you choose to, you know. Um, he said, I haven't taken my word back. She says, I'm not taking my word back. You took it back by doing what you did with blocking me and not giving a shit about how I was feeling mentally and physically. He said, so you didn't accept my apology like you said you did, and you're now revisiting all of this while we're already discussing and deciding to move forward because it was best. So I wonder at this point if he's starting to doubt whether or not she's pregnant. Um... I think at this point, he's like, fuck it. You know, she goes, you have driven me nuts with the circles and harassing. You're a terrible person. She said, oh my God, are you serious? He said, you can enjoy your bastard child and all the money in your own. Uh, she said, did you see what the church says about abortion? He said, yeah, I'm serious. I don't give a flip. She said, I would keep my promise to you. He said, church is a belief. You already lied to me about many fronts. I will never believe you. Um, she said, I've changed my mind because I felt tortured on this. Um, uh, let's see. So he says, stop effing saying it and do it. I can't take it. You've pushed me. She says, I can be over by eight and, uh, and do it. What WTF is wrong. He said, you, that's what, <laughs> that's what's wrong. You. Antoinette said this whole time. I thought this was Clayton's text with her because they sound identical. JD is imploding herself in court. Oh uh, yeah. Antoinette. Now, we've shared this before, but, you know, we have a lot of new audience, and it's just important to continue to just expose this. I know a lot of these text messages are new. Greg Gillespie claims he's got even more than this. He's got videos and phone calls. He claims he's got way more than this. Um, I think he just doesn't want to go back to court with her. I think he's probably done. He spent all this money and got nothing out of it. Um, she said, I don't think you'd be proud of these texts another day. He said, yeah, first time you only are because I'm not. Now you think, now you know how the effort feels. Thanks for nothing the last 20 days other than sickness and stress. Um, she goes, I'm keeping my cool here. He goes, yeah, telling me I'm responsible for a bastard child. She says, I have felt the same way going through this. Wish the roles had been reversed. Uh, he said, you should have taken care of it the effing moment you found out and never told me. Selfish. Wow. Did we miss anything? Um, he said, you don't need a dime and you know it. So leave me out of your decision to keep a bastard. He, she said, I don't want to keep it. He said, if you want to keep it, then be an adult and take it, the responsibility yourself. She says, the government does not think that way about child support, but that's stupid anyway. He says, oh, she said, I want to keep my mo promise to, to who you were this morning. That's all I want. He said, what about the millions of dollars you have versus my debt? How will they view that? She said, I don't have millions. He said, no, it's a promise you made weeks ago, yet retracted many times. She said, and my money is separate from my parents. I don't get a cent from my sad, I think she meant from my dad. Um, so, of course, and then, by the way, that lawyer then spelled Gillespie wrong. Um, text messages from Mr. Gillespie coercing Miss Jane Doe into an abortion. By the way, you can say all you want that Greg Gillespie looks bad here, and I understand it. I understand why you wouldn't want this aired out. Mike Maricini, same thing, but at some point, you have to remember, none of us know how we would react in this situation. None of us. 
because we are not at level 100 needy. Uh, level 100 needy. Breaker, breaker, chastening, copy over. We are at level 100 needy, uh, preparing for our descent. Uh, over. Uh, all right, back to the matter at hand. So we already saw these messages. She said, I'm hoping I can trust that if it happened under our circumstances, it can happen if we are doing it the right way. Do not tell me you want to, that being get knocked up. Do not tell me you want a relationship with me unless you are sure here and don't tell me you want me because you feel pressured or even hold it over my head that you were only with me because you wanted me to get an abortion because that's not fair to either one of us. Go out with hot girls, find someone else great. I don't think we're strangers considering we felt enough chemistry to have sex when that's something neither of us do. I felt that best friend lover vibe with you and need to know if you feel that for me is that a taylor swift song i felt that best friend lover vibe from you and need to know if you feel me too okay i don't know can we get a an acoustic guitar i felt that best friend lover bop. we got a bop we got a bop here I don't think we're strangers considering we felt enough chemistry to have sex when that's not that's something neither of us do. Um, I felt that best friend lover. Okay, when I say I felt, you guys say that best friend lover vibe, right? In five, six, seven. I felt that best friend lover vibe neither of us do. That's another one. Best friend lover uh you you might think i'm kidding but i'm not let's make a country song called best friend lover vibe uh oh is it already one of her songs i felt that best friend lover vibe every day you wanted me to take the pills and make our baby go away bastard child indeed i don't care if i've got millions gonna sink you to hell and make you uh okay, whatever um you sex me up my best friend lover okay uh that best friend lover are we songwriters um best friend lover vibe song uh, coming up after level 100 needy, we have best friend lover vibe here on the pop station. Jane Doe 100. Um, uh, I felt that best friend lover vibe with you and need to know if you feel that for me. I'm going to just screen grab that and maybe turn this. Boy, I wish I could sing. Uh, and I knew I was definitely not going to go through with the pregnancy. W would I be the girl you would want to be in a relationship with and be crazy about? Or would you still want to look around? Please, please, please be honest. And then I will give you an answer in my next message. I just want to know without any expectation from me. Or I will always wonder if you resent me. You wonder if she resents you? He said, I'm going to answer your question in the morning. I need to gather my thoughts. She said, it sounds like you have it. He said, I do. The short answer is yes. But since you won't allow me to gather myself to express myself, the answer is yes. And she said, I was trying to make a decision today like you wanted, but please gather your thoughts. She said, yeah, I told you that my sister is the only family I have. So her wedding is really important. I was thinking I was going to have to tell her that I wasn't going to have you as a date after I had already told her and she was making a place card under your name. Would have been really embarrassing to explain that you had ghosted me. If you're into it for the long haul, I would like you would want to go. I would think you would want to go. I believe you. Don't bait on me. No, don't bail on me after I do this and then on the wedding because that would be awful. He said, clearly, why do you feel the need to say something like this? Um, boots on the ground said, I resent her and I don't even know her. She said, I'm not being manipulative. You are no abortion. You are, in, uh, you are out. No abortion. You are in abortion. I'm asking for guidance. Okay. So we already shared that. Sorry. There's, this is all just duplicates here. Gosh, we're only on page 28. Let's keep going. Um, he blocked her. He said, she said, this whole thing is really up to you. You didn't want what you promised before. I want to believe you. I was excited to be with you. I still want to be. Um, okay. So she always likes to give the guy the control. This is up to you. I'm not taking my word back. You took it back by doing what you did with blocking me and not giving a shit about how I was feeling mentally and physically. All right, let's go more. Golly. I'm, she says, I'm sorry. This is the biggest decision of our lives. And I want clarity. 
He said, you're pushing me away acting like this. You're going in circles. I answered your question. Then more questions, more requests. I made a decision. So what's the end game here? She wants him to actually, um, like, what's the end? Oh, Elaine Murray with the 10-pound super chat. Thank you so much, Elaine, for the 10-pound super chat. Let me know if I missed any super chats. I, um, you know, I'm trying my best to uh, juggle multiple things here. Uh, but boy, is it uh, kind of complicated. Uh, she said, I wanted you. That's still what I want. But if you're out, either way, I'll do the right thing. He said, you should consider the seriousness of what you're doing. Keeping a child in a home with one parent, a bastard child that isn't wanted. Plus, you're giving me an ultimatum, the right thing. She says, morally, not for me. He says, keeping a child that you have admitted to wanting to abort. I want nothing to do with that. She said, I wanted to abort it to be with you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So somebody... Oh, yeah. Someone sent me, I don't know if I should read this, um, that they were on sleeping medication that tested positive for pregnancy. We found out because we missed a period and had taken uh, promethazine the night before. The only false positive I've ever had, and it terrified both of us. Poor guy was living with his parents at the time, and it aged him about 15 years. It's a rare drug reaction, and it doesn't happen with everyone, but my doctor said to me that if you know you react that way to the drug, you can be pretty confident you always will in the future. Besides, it's just an antihistamine, and pregnancy tests can be bought for cheap in bulk. Um... So yeah, there, there are drugs out there that will make you test positive. Um, but again, maybe that's different than the HCG test. She said, I wanted to abort it to be with you. Let's screen grab that. I wanted to abort it to be with you. That's another song. Level 100 needy, best friend, lover vibe. I wanted to abort, abort it to be with you. Abort it to be with you. All right, I'm now creating a whole album. That's called I, I Abort It to Be With You. He said, I want a kid that we decide to conceive together. Now, of course, at this point, he's all bullshit. So he's calling her out. He's, he's, he's saying, morally, why would you bring in a child you were going to abort? She goes, well, I only wanted to abort it to be with you. Wow. Where do we even go from here, folks? Just and People are wondering how much coffee I have left. I am at, now at seven-eighths of a tank, just for those wondering. I am at seven eighths. That's a half, five, six. Hold on. Yeah, about a seven eighths. Thank you for the coffee donations. You guys are just so kind. You know, someone sent a cold brew coffee to my house. Love you guys. Yes, yeah, sir. Once in a while, I get people uh, sending me uh, cease and desist to my house, but every once in a while, I get a cold brew. As long as the cold brew doesn't cease and the caffeine doesn't desist. Um, I'll abort it to be with you. And by it, I mean this video. Let's keep going. She said, I don't want a child on my own. It probably sounds crazy considering only four dates together, but I can see us having a kid in a few years. I felt something so special with you. Um, he said, okay, then you have your answer. Can we move forward? She said, but I'm afraid that saying that pushed you away last time and made you ghost me. I want to ease your stress and move forward for both of our sakes. Greg, if you don't feel that way, don't ask me to do this. He, he said, I just let you know what I want to do. You're questioning again? Um... She said, I'm coming over. I'm saying you don't exactly seem like you're looking forward to seeing me. I told you when was it best for me to take them and you're empathic, emphatic about me taking them with you and not and, and then not even spending the night together until Sunday. And I'm doing them. I told you that. You acted like I hadn't given you an out while saying I would still do the abortion. Here's your out. Don't be with me out of pity. And then she sends a photo. He said, that is an out? How is that an out? Having a bastard child and being the parent of the child, you, your text is an out? Um... Hard to follow. She said, my gut is telling me this is all about taking the pills. Okay, so he's still trying to get her to take the pills. I mean, it's just wild. Uh, it is just wild. Reading your messages. You guys are all great. So many people in the chat. I appreciate it. Christina said HCG testing is the only test that can be done to confirm pregnancy outside of an ultrasound. And again, HCG test is only an indicator of a pregnancy. Ultrasounds are so easy. I mean, I could literally, you can get a ultrasound sent to your house. Uh, I mean, look at this. Um, ult, ult, uh, uh, ultra, uh, what's it called? Ultrasound? Uh, ultrasound home um, uh, d uh, device. Ultrasound home device. You could literally see for yourself now you can spend a lot of money on one, but my point is, is that should we buy it? Should we buy an ultrasound? I'll get one. Well, well let's just start doing mobile ultrasounds. It's only forty eight hundred dollars. 
piece of cake. But yeah, there's ultrasound companies, home um, a service where, let's say Nashville. So you can, you, Little Belly's Ultrasound, here it is, sponsored. You can go to the, this company will come to your house. They'll do ultrasounds. They're mobile. They show up and they can like help you out. So to think that, to think that, um, you know, she wasn't able to figure this out is just wild. Um, but he didn't know. I mean, he probably didn't know a lot of these things. Um, she said, I'm obviously still doing it, but I'm suspicious of your intentions for the future. Uh, he said, obviously, how is that obvious? She said, because I promise you to take them. He said, you've said that before and you threatened to not. She said, I'm going to, I'm just saying you're acting obsessed with me taking the pills and not with me as a person. Don't have me come over and pretend to like me or what something with me. If you don't feel it, that would make it way harder on me. So he said, okay, so you're not coming over. Um, he said, I have to be at my appointment, um, working and taking care of, uh, I'm taking off Monday. I've already said what the sense of urgency we need to handle this and it didn't get handled last week. I'm not get going more time than necessary. You told me you wanted to do it, so let's do it. She said, I'm working. So, okay, so I'm sorry that this is going on and on. Um, I'm taking the pills tonight. Um, that's another funny, st I'm taking the pills tonight. Aborted to be with you. I'm taking the pills tonight. Um, Rook, Rooks with a $2 super chat. Overdrell is HCG injection used in sports doping. Interesting. Um, Zutan, Zut of Anthrax said, when I was pregnant 20 years ago, there was companies you could take ultrasounds from. Patrick, within 89 um, DKK, buy something for your upcoming baby. You are like the Sherlock Holmes. Again, what is a DKK to USD? What? Uh, just trying to see what this is. That is, the, oh, the Danish crown. Thank you so much. So 89 Danish crowns. Oh, that's uh, over 12 and a half US dollars. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Maybe I'll buy uh, my wife some ice cream. Uh, we're two weeks uh, left in the pregnancy and ice cream. By the way, did you see? I'm sure you saw this, but I'm just going to share it with you guys anyway. Um, I, I think you know you guys saw that um, one of the ways in which we're trying to get this baby out is by interpretive dance. So there we are, kind of doing our interpretive dance there. If you like to see. I actually hurt my knee doing this. That's right. I injured my knee thrusting. What? Be careful watching this. Babies may be made. But anyway, there, there it is. That's, um, that is a full term belly right there with um, an absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking human, both inside and out. We love Tasha. I think I can speak on behalf of the whole audience that we love Tasha. She has been such a peach. Oh, and we have the bassinet set up. Hey, honey, can you hear me? Tasha. Oh, maybe she's sleeping. Um, anyway, you can go check all that out. Uh, all right, so let's keep this party going. I'm going to, oh shoot, we only have four minutes left. I'm going live on Patreon. Okay, I'll extend this a few more minutes, but I have my doctor's appointment, so um, I'm not going to be able to go too long. Um, only ask me to do this if you want me, not just an abortion. I was mad yesterday and impulsive. I wouldn't ask you for child support, so just make sure that I am what you want and you're not just pitying me. Um, so she says, I'm not going to ask you for child support, so that's nice. Um, so it goes on and on. I mean, uh, text messages from Miss Jane Doe expressing her expectations for the relationship if she were to have an abortion. So just because she set expectations for a relationship doesn't mean that that, that that's what's going to happen, right? So they do the counterclaim. Um, geez, it goes on and on. You know, like uh, this counterclaim. Uh, let's see here. Uh, defendant denies any of the allegations of plaintiff's complaint. Um Let's see what else is going on here. In the fraudulent email dated August 19th. So on August 19th, throughout all those text messages, this was the fraudulent email that um, Wood Nick Law says was sent by Joe Kotchett. Everything you told us about pregnancy tests and ultrasounds aligned with the timing you provided us. There were no past pregnancies on your record and the three obstetricians you saw felt that pregnancy was very consistent with intercourse that took place between June 30th and July 1st. So... The belief is that this email was completely fabricated. Joe Kotchett allegedly emailed plaintiff in pertinent part the following. I'm ready to get started on this. This may be very needy and we could make this a public interest story. Again, that's a threat. Threat of publicity. Natalie with a $2 super chat. Before my IVF egg retrieval, I took an HCG shot. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Um... 
Claude said, Dave outkicked his coverage with Tasha. Well done, sir. I appreciate the compliment. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? She likes big boys, right? She likes a guy who's level 100 needy. So we already shared all of this. We go back and forth. The people that were in the email chain weren't even members of that uh, law firm. And the law firm denies being attached, even though there was what they believe to be a manufactured fabricated contingent fee agreement. This information was information that Jane's current attorney claims he didn't know about. Well, I'm guessing he's caught up on it now that he sees it in the court filings. In addition to fabricating documents, plaintiff has refused to take a non-invasive prenatal paternity test. Plaintiff stated she was willing to take a paternity test to prove that the child is Greg's, but that it would be possible that she would not be pregnant, as I'm sure what the purpose is, because if the pregnancy is not viable, that proves that his coercion did result in the end of the pregnancy. So what she's saying is his coercion caused her to have a miscarriage. Plaintiff has fabricated the, or the an abortion coercion allegation to explain why a paternity test would show that she is not pregnant. Uh, plaintiff has not taken a paternity test despite defendants' repeated offers to pay for the test. Upon information and belief, plaintiff's allegations of abortion coercion, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and domestic violence are quite simply blatant fabrications that underlie her real intention. Um, so... We've read this a million times. I mean, how is there 40 more pages? Let's see what else. More exhibits. Plaintiff's motion for partial summary judgment. Counterclaims. Um, just going to try to... Uh, so, seeing if there's any more exhibits. Exhibits. Na, 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 na. I'm a fucking alcoholic. Right? Isn't that a song by exhibit? Defendant counterclaim Greg Gillespie's second supplemental rule disclosure. Um, plaintiff has reportedly fabricated pregnancy and subsequent abortion in the past during a relationship with Mike Maricini. So even in this case, it brings up the previous one, 2016. So they don't have as much information on Mike Maricini, uh, although. In some ways, there's more information because with Mike Maricini, uh, they showed affidavits. La Jardine said, our attorneys not allowed to binge watch content on their clients? Oh, absolutely. But it's wild that they that her lawyer, I mean, I get it. Her lawyer wants none of this previous stuff involved in this case. And it's like, uh, we get it. But at the same time, um, you know, the fact that this law firm, Kochit, is not talking. The fact that there's a multiple, three, at least, previous allegations. Um, okay, so let's read what this says. As alleged in FDV 18813693 and plaintiff's admissions regarding her fabrication of a pregnancy and subsequent abortion during their relationship in 2016. So she, her fact. Uh, redacted and redacted are also believed to have knowledge of information regarding allegations plaintiff lodged against Mike Maricini and plaintiff's admissions regarding her fabrication. So admissions of fa fabricating a pregnancy and subsequent abortion during her relationship with Mike Maricini in 2016. Upon information and belief, redacted and redacted live in San Francisco. Plaintiff's family members included, but not limited to, have knowledge or information relevant to the allegations that give rise. So I think... Let's see what she... Let's, let's see what she actually said about admitting pregnancy. Uh, omissions regarding her fabrication of a pregnancy. She gave a someone gave a written statement under penalty of perjury on or March 27th, 2018, 2018, indicating knowledge of plaintiff's admissions regarding her fabrication of a pregnancy. Any and all persons in, in identified. So um, let's see if there's any more information regarding this um, in the exhibits. Uh, Zazueta Law. Attorney for Michael S.B. Greg Gillespie. Let's fly through this. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep talking on Patreon, but let's just get through this. Um, I think those texts were the big part. Because I, 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 I I'm not qualified as a like a like as a legal analyst to go through some of these like I don't know other complaints, but what we can do is we can read text messages just fine. Um, oral arguments. That's what got us into this problem. A blow job. Uh, so that's it. So that takes us to the end right now. 
1,300 people in the chat. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over directly to Patreon right now. Again, it's patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I will give you a link in the chat room right now, and you can join me if you want to on Patreon, where we'll continue to have uh, a little bit of a discussion about this, and also we're going to have a discussion about um, the other it, the other workings today. Uh, so we're still monetized. That's good. Uh, let me get into the chat room real quick, and I'm going to post a link to the Patreon. I should have already had this pinned. Uh, www.patreon.com slash Dave Neal. By the way, you can join the Patreon for free if you don't want to be a paid member. You won't get any of the private membership videos, but I just posted a link to it. But you will be able to get all of my other updates as they come in. There are free updates. So, um that's where we're at, folks. Again, I'm going over to Patreon right now where we're going to finish this conversation. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for all of your uh, connecting in the chat room. That really helps us uh, continue to do these live stream versions of videos, especially for the longer stuff. Um, and what else did I want to say? Um, thank you for being uh, part of my best friend, lover vibe community. And um, call me, um, call me maybe. Um, and, um, shout out to the level 100 needy crowd. All right, folks. Tor says it's worth the five bucks for access to everything. I think it is. I'll be live for the next 90 minutes. I'll go catch you for the next hour and a half over there. Bye everybody. Thanks for the support. Oh, we made it all the way with still, still three quarters of a tank. So that means it's going to be a good live stream. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye everyone.